Hello. The subject of this video is the installation and features of the plugin necessary for using generative fill function within the Krita program. I had previously published a video on this topic. Now, due to some changes and developments in this plugin, I have prepared this video again. Stable Diffusion is an open source image generation software developed by Stability AI. Krita is not mandatory to use this software. It can also be used with interfaces such as Comfy UI and Automatic 1111. The plugin I will demonstrate works as a bridge between Comfy UI and Krita. With the features added over time, it has become quite useful. The images it generates are of high quality. Among the features available in the current version are text to image generation, image expansion, adding, deleting, refining objects, upscaling, live drawing, and image to image generation. Additionally, it supports technical parts of stable diffusion as LoRa, ControlNet, and VAE. It runs SD and XL models. SD models can generate images up to 512 pixels, while XL models can generate images up to 1024 pixels. Although these dimensions may seem small, it is possible to obtain much larger images with smart methods. Firstly, I will guide you through the installation process of Krita. To begin, I'll navigate to the krita.org website. Since my operating system is Windows, the website automatically recognizes this. Next, I'll download the installation file and proceed with the installation. Before doing so, I've ensured that all my drivers are up to date. In a previous video, I forgot to update my graphics card driver, which resulted in an error during the plug-in installation. The installation process will be fast-forwarded in the video. Now, I'm launching Krita. I'm opening a new file. From the menu, I'm selecting Settings Manage Resources. Then, I'm clicking on Open Resource Folder. This method is especially helpful for those who find locating this folder challenging. I'm leaving the folder open and closing Krita. The Pakrita folder is where we'll install our plugin. Next, I'll download the latest version from the provided link. You can find the link in the description. By the way, I'm not a developer, just a user. This page is where you can find future updates as well. If there are any changes, I can add them to the description. In this new version, there has been a change in the folder structure. Although the plugin still resides within Pakrita, it's now installed Stable Diffusion in the AI Diffusion folder. This process is automatic, so it's not difficult. I will only download the zip file seen here and extract it to the PyCrita folder. For now, I'm leaving it as it is. Later, I'll edit the folder name. It opened unnecessarily in a subfolder. There's a file and a folder. I'm moving these to the parent directory. I'm also deleting these. The plugin will be inside the PyCrita folder exactly like this. Before proceeding, let me elaborate a bit more on the folder structure. The user's folder under the C drive is where user data is stored. A separate folder is created for each user who logs into the computer. You should open the folder where your own username is located, marked with username in red. Once you enter the user folder, navigate to AppData, Roaming, Crita folder. 
If you can't see the app data folder, you can enable the option to show hidden files from the folder settings, or you can directly type the address into the address bar. After reaching the Krita folder, we will copy the files into the Pakrita folder. Extract all files and folders in the zip contents into the Pakrita folder. There is a folder and a file. If you've used Krita before, there may be other files within Pakrita as well. The contents of the plugin will be located here as a folder and a file. As the plugin runs, your settings and content will be written to the AI underscore diffusion folder. The developer has mentioned that this prevents data loss during updates. I'll open Krita and continue the installation from there. From the menu, I select Settings, Configure Krita. Python Plugin Manager. AI Image Diffusion will become available. If it doesn't, double check your folder structure. It became active for me immediately. If not, I would have needed to open it from the Docker's menu. You should do the same. To initiate the installation, I'm pressing the configure button. Look, you can see where the installation will take place. It says at least 10 gigabytes of space is required. I estimate it will take up to 30 gigabytes for a full installation. Since my graphics card is NVIDIA, CUDA should be selected. You'll select the components to be installed here. I'm choosing everything. If you don't make changes, only the necessary components will be installed. If you don't need Excel models, don't select them. They take up to 6 gigabytes of space. I'm pressing the install button. The rest should be installed automatically from here. It'll take a bit of time. After this, I occasionally speed up the video. As I've mentioned before, you don't need to install all of these features. All the features I selected have been installed and are shown in green. Later on, you can use this window to install additional features if needed. First, let me demonstrate how the generate feature works. I'll choose one of the prompts I've written for ChatGPT. I can also write simple prompts, but I'm going to use these prompts generated to create images in bulk. These are all nature scenes. There are words like mountain and valley at the top. I'm selecting that. If anyone's curious, I have a video where I showcase these types of images. I'm not changing the model. Let's have it draw as a photo. The first image generation takes a bit longer. It needs a few seconds to load the model. Let me try another one. I picked one randomly. The quality isn't bad. XL models are better but they work slower. I will explain later. Also, I will show how to install custom models. By clicking the Apply button, I transfer the generated image to a layer. Before we continue, I want to show one more plugin. It's by the same developer. I'll add this address to the description as well. It helps us select objects, and I find it useful. Again, I'll download a zip file, but the installation for this one is different. I'll copy the contents of the zip file to the folder where Krita is installed. For me, it's in the program files directory. There are already folders with the same names. I'm copying over them.
we need to restart Krita. This video is at the same level as the previous one. Later on, I'll be making videos on more advanced topics in detail. Thank you for watching.